last one buried when there was Ms. Hortense Whitney. Whitney. Yeah, she is. Hortense. Hortense Miller. 32. And uh, Ms. Whitney was born. She was 82. She, she, she was 84 years old. I don't know where the old Whitney's lived here now. I know Dr. Frank Smith built this on this land out here where they had Miss Bertie Whitney, their only child. Benjamin Whitney's only child. Frank Smith married Bertie Whitney? Yeah. And they live where, on that 100 acres of land, they where a uh, good person lived. That's they built, right. And they built a very nice home there, which was, I don't think it burned, I think it's fine, torn oh. down. Uh-huh. You know, it's amazing at the fortunes and families that came and went, and there's no mark, nobody left that even remembers them, but you. If I don't talk fast, I'm going to be in the back. to remember. <laughs> well, look at that. The people at that lot, and there's mm -hmm. one stone what? right here, Van Hooser. There are some graves on this side there. Come Never on. heard of the Van Hooser. I think he was a saloon keeper. Yeah, that's right. He's in the book. And his daughter... Married over in the southeast part of the county, Miss Blanche, she went to school with Bernie Malden. And in an old age marriage, old man John Lewis found her over there and met over there and married her. John and, Lewis? Yeah. I saw it. And uh, she, when, after she moved over here, she came in. She, 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 she was Miss Simpson. And uh, uh, Randy didn't know when I read Miss Simpson, but she came to the bank one day. I was in working at Stardewa and said, hello, Bernie. She said, he said now, I believe you've got me. She said, well, I'm Blanche Van Hooser. I used to go to school with you. Well, now, in 1874, Mr. Van Hooser is licensing at Saloon. Bob Van Hooser was named name, all right. Yeah. Now and you see there's an inscription on this side and maybe one on the other side. I see R.S. Van Hooser. Well, that's Mr. W.J. King. Who was foreman for 50 years. See, there's another, another inscription on this side and one down below. There's several graves there. Yeah. Do you realize that in all the years of this shop, there weren't but three foremen in the blacksmith shop? I believe that's right. John King and Bill King and who was else? Well, I don't know. Mr. McDermott? No, he's boiler he's shop. I don't know. Maybe it was just two. <laughs> well, that's all of them there. I guess one of them was still forming there in 27 when they... Bill King is tired from having the clothes and shut down. All right. I believe his retirement date maybe is 28. And he... But you remember him, don't oh, yeah. you? He was an alderman at one time. Oh, yeah. One of them there. Ran three times and never could make it. Huh. They were Roman Catholic. So yeah. They don't have meetings, but they can't have to call uh, mission. They have to call the mission. This the church calls them the same thing. It's just to see the Well, place. now, when you were young, what, was there a little feeling in the town? Did, they, did people know who the Catholics were? And that I, came along with the organization of the Q Clubs about 1920, 1920. An awareness it, it really intensified then. I see. But they used to, old man King used to always invite us to come up to the mission when they have a, about a week's mission services up there. Papa and I'd go. Well, you know that choir I was always in the loft to the back. And I never had seen anything like that before. And I wanted to look around so bad and see who was up in that tower. He'd tell me, you misbehave, I get home, I'll beat the britches off of you. Don't even turn around? Yeah, I'm not <laughs> turn around looking up there. <laughs> no, sir. But listen, did you know that Charlie Moore is an Episcopal priest, yeah. and then he said words that the guy really got through yesterday and, and said the final prayer. I didn't know who he was up there. I saw this fellow with this long raiment on. No, I didn't know. I knew that he was an Episcopal priest. He's a, he's a doctor and also a priest. Yeah, and he preaches. I mean, he's got a church on Sunday. Old uh, Bishop Quintard, the second bishop of Tennessee, known Generally, among Episcopalians, the old Episcopalian especially, is Quintard the Good. Quintard the Good, I've heard and, of uh, that. I heard old Bishop Maxim preaching on the radio once. So I said, never could find out anything about what kind of a man Bishop Quintard was. 
He said, I met an old fellow up in East Tennessee, he said he's in the Confederate Army with him. Well, I said, what kind of a man was he? <laughs> he's standing with that big mahogany pulpit with sounding board over. Well, he said he was a good man. He said when things were quiet, he took the Bible and taught us the Bible lessons out of it. He said he was a doctor before he got to be a bishop. And said when we were sick, our injured, said he took a medical kit and worked on it, doctor on it. But said when the Yankees got too hot after, said he took a gun and fit like hell. <laughs> <laughs> Quint hard the good. Yeah. Another story I know about that old man. I heard up there this morning. He retired up there. And he told the cook to make him an eggnog. And she said, I can't make an eggnog because we hadn't got any nutmeg. Well, he said, go out to the neighbor. Somebody had nothing nutmeg. And she went and came back and said, Bishop, we can't make the eggnog because I had any neighbors got any nutmeg. He said, well, you just didn't go far enough. I go far enough. You'll find nutmeg. On the way back to the kitchen, she saw him. I don't know whether you remember button shoes or not. Oh, yeah. I, a, I've seen pictures of them with a little hook. Yeah, a shoe button. Yeah. And had a seat of handle. And she yeah. picked that up and went on and made the eggnog, whipped the cream, put it on top of it, and got over that thing, scraped all that. See, See the handle off over the top of it, took it in that tent and went back up to get to it. he said, I knew you'd find nutmeg if you'd look for it. I said, I never drank a butt of eggnog in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that cedar still had a little fragrance there. Yeah. Is this Mr. Bob right here? Yeah. Oh, I wonder about Bob. I liked him. I went by and visited with him. He sold me stuff cheap. I like Robert too. He was off at the fame. I even invited him to come to my son's school class one time. He took the teacher apart. I thought, boy, I'll have to go clean him. You know, down there in the Saturday time, it's bigger now. That's where we're going to church. But if you didn't go to Sunday school down there, you weren't socially acceptable. So this boy's name was, was an Irish name. He didn't go and he, uh, Oh, he, I think he drank. He didn't have to get old Jackson get with the girls. But they put on Mahoney. They took it on me to go invite Mahoney to come to Dr. Avon's Sunday school class. And he was eating an apple. When he opened the door and I told him what I came to do, he almost dropped the apple. <laughs> Such a shock. <laughs> he ought to be right down here in this cell. Who is this Robert C. Leland here? That's old Mr. Bob Leland. Oh, yeah. Right yeah. Brother to Mr. Baron. One of those Leland was postmaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Tom Leland. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I came across a name somewhere in some of your stuff, Tom Leland McCullough. Somebody named the baby thing. Well, a man died, oh, a man's wife died the other day, Mr. Tom McCullough, and isn't his? No, his name is Lon McCullough. Ron McCullough's wife died? Yeah. I think she was a widow. She had she got grown children out. Yeah. Now, I guess... That's Robert right there. There was flowers that turned over, but he's down there. I guess he and Shalaya on. I see. That's him. That's a nice stone. It's got Johnson there. And Pierce here, and that's Shalati, Claudia Knight, and Robert are born 1907. Knight, Mr. Bill Knight, Johnny, Pierce Knight, Hubert C., and Barbara A. No. But this one is here. Claudia Knight Johnson. Oh. Now this is Robert L. Ward. Well, Miss Ward hadn't died yet, had she? Yes, she has. Ella Francis Sharp Ward, 81, 1981. Yeah, I didn't remember that. 
Here's a Martin. Adam, Moselle Martin. Oh, she's not there yet. That's one of these girls right up here. Sam Martin. There's a good spot in there. I don't know. 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 I agree with the railroad man. An engineer, I think. But I don't know. I've never seen his name. I don't know. I'm sure. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't Kenny Lee, the LWS, was the first man to die with the yellow fever. Did you find him? No. I didn't know it was had a stone or anything. He's mentioned in the book, isn't it? Look at that first stone there, see if I feel. Right here? Yeah, old man. Well, old man you know of love. love. Frank Love? Yeah. That's William. Peter William. I don't know about Kennedy. Frank Love and Amber Love bed here. But this is a driveway. Frank Love died in 1915. Close to, let me see him. Yeah, 1915. That boy was firing for him and got killed. Uh, what was his name? He hadn't been working very long. He wasn't 21 years old. One of no those Swede names. Uh... Kill the Hudson there. Reverend A.B. Fly. Right behind Joshua H. Fly. Yes. Yeah. Well, look at that. Hartwell W. Freeman. He's a friend. He's a friend. And both of them are there. Well, one died September the 19th, and the other died October the 16th, like three days in a month. And they both died in the yellow field. Well, that's amazing. You know, there's no entries there for three months. But here's a stone. They're not in the book, I don't think. But there they are. Well, now, where did you say Kenny Lee was? I don't know. He died at Miss Chris. I know that. Oh, he died at Miss Chris? Yes. How would, uh... Now it is. He could be right yonder. There's a Chris Chase, that's Miss Woodson, that on the one there's a space, and then a child. And that's old Miss... She was a Marquette, old man, S.E. Marquette's sister, Miss uh, Montgomery on the north end. Yeah. But there could be Kenny Lee's right in there. But I don't know that. Now... Well, this Miss Chris probably ran a boarding house, didn't she? Well, she oh, at least keep a few boarders. That's right. And make a little money on the side. Well, now, they you had know. to stay somewhere, you know. Yeah, and that's right over at West State Lancaster. Yeah. Oh, I just wondered where it was. That was very convenient to the shop. Probably. Miss, uh, Miss, uh, Durden had the first house south of the depot on the east side of the track. Yeah. Gallery ran around across the front down one side part of the way. She ran a boarding house there. She's she right into it for all those clerks at the depot that didn't have homes. Yeah. Well, that house is not there anymore, yeah. is it? The paint house, if I write it down. Yeah, now, when you were young, that was a nice little neighborhood over there, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, several houses. Girl Sipper lived in that north house. And there's... The big two-story house where Sam Addington used to live? Fronting on the railroad. Oh, fronting on the railroad. Oh, I see. There used to be houses all up in the north end of town along the railroad, somebody was telling me. Well, on, I know that on the west side there, Mr. McDermott lived in one of them. It's three or four houses that belonged to old Miss Powell. They rented one of them. And they had, old man Wagner had a private telephone line going to the store up to the mill. And Miss Mac was out in the backyard one day hanging out some washing lights and struck one and knocked her down. Miss McDermott? Yeah. Yeah, I found it in the Oxford paper. 
It said Mrs. John McDermott of Water Valley was struck by lightning and rendered unconscious for how many hours, it said. She, she was out for a long time. Yes, sir, I was reading through an Oxford paper. And you don't get the tab, and it's going to get old. I just can't read it. Now, there's a price right there, Edgar. Edgar. E. Price, he's an old-timer. He's going to come back to town. Born in 68 and died in 82. He's 14 years old. Oh, that's the captain's son, huh? Guy Price's brother. Yeah. Well, he probably, well, that's 68. If the captain married right after the war, that's their first child. I guess. Well, there's Mary Ida Price right there on the two. That's the little afflicted girl. Yeah. She probably was the youngest of their children. She's on the picture. Calista wasn't, I don't know, Calista was younger than that. She wasn't born that. Who'd you say Calista married? Townie. Townie, yeah, that's right. Now they got a child or two up here. That's right. Well, there was a, a fella's name that you mentioned a minute ago. Let me. Th uh, uh, when we were down at the market, I, I remember that I had seen the name Thad Market on something. Who was Thad Market? He was there, grandfather's brother. He was buried back here. Had a Confederate monument. Mm -hmm. And uh, J.B. Masson, you know, married Elsie. Yeah. Ray and Elsie Ray's grandmother was a sister. She's buried in there. He was buried in there too. Man. But, you know, J.B. King Ray, he hated Saturday Market, so mad on that insurance business. And he had him take that stone out of that and restore it under that house. I mean, all this bit, I don't know the heck of it. I just wouldn't have done that. Oh, that is, boy, that's awful. That is, that's undue advantage. That market has been dead 60 years, all right. Well, you know, I got a picture. I don't know who gave it to me. It's a hunting camp over in the Delta. And there's four men sitting around the table. Well, one of them is very obviously Charlie Hammond. And one of them is a Byers. I think Byers might have given me the picture. But standing in the background is an old man with whiskers and the fellow gave it to him and said that was old man Thad Market. I never knew him. Old man. You know, I went up to the old market place one time with Charlie and me and Maud, you know, and Marcus was scared of old, old Cal Carver married the youngest one of them. And she inherited that place and they were scared of him. But Charlie wanted to go up there and me and Maud and went up there and parked out the road and had a fence around the house then. You know, so the man out there. Side of the fence, where you don't know them, will be one of them. There's Mr. Mathis, who had married Cal Tarver's daughter. And I told him, who it was, they had on through the house. And folks in the TV then said, Who is she? I said, She's Minnie Maud Low. She's Ch John Mark's daughter. He said, Well, John, come on in. He didn't have any harbor in that HBS. But we met his wife, who was Cal Tarver's daughter by the market woman. Mm -hmm. She was just a nice lady as I ever knew. Her name was Alma. And this girl, Ms. called her Alma, and they called you know, her daughter, who's up there now, who married her. You know, that Tara. They live there. What's his name? Anyhow, they called her Little Alma, but she's, she's a real old Marquette. The old ones are big. Old Miss Ray, or John Ray's mother was a whopper. Uh, Is that where John Ray got his size? He was a big fella. Yeah, I never knew his daddy. I knew his mother. I knew her mother. his mother. She was old and bedridden. But she was married before that and had two children. That's Dick Lipson and his sister. The picture on the turntable, John Ray's feet are hanging down that much farther than anybody else. And he's a big fella. He was a big man, but he wasn't terribly fat. He was kind of rounded at the front, but he was a big man. Died real young with a heart attack. Yeah, he was, had his fiddle out, had done got his bath and had his supper, and, and going down to the Elks Club to play for a, a benefit affair for an old-fashioned square dance. Yeah. And he uh, uh, set up there. Uh, well, you know, every one of those, well, Jake and, and Charlie both had musical talent. Yeah. I don't know that Elsie played, but... Uh, Elsie played piano. Did she? Yeah, they all did. Well, that's stinking J.B. Massey. Do a thing like that. Well, I better get you home so you can eat. Dinner. Well, here's our cook over here. I got turned around. Well, here's 
C.G. Blunt. Never heard of him. Lord Blunt. No. He was a Baptist preacher and a usurer. His own money was a nigga to Oh. Pinched him and squeezed him all the time. A usurer, huh? A usurer, yeah. Who was I've seen him one time. He was 71 years old in 1900. That's his wife right there, so. Oh, he's on the other say, side. I couldn't even read about that in 1902. See? He is Bedford F. Blunt, but he died in 1902. That's the son. Oh. Oh, he, he is in 1908. Eight, yeah. See, I was five years old then. Yeah. But the, the standpipe, the people, the young standpipe would wash it out. Standpipe used to didn't have top on pigeons used to die and fall in there. <laughs> no. But he lived down there where Ed Sherrill lived. He built that house. Yeah. And I remember him seeing him stand on that side porch watching all that water come down. All these little white whiskers over his head. And you just remember that. You mean the pigeons were dying that thing? No wonder yeah, people I had typhoid fever. Oh, this is the little coffee your boy here was one year old when he died. Doug. Yeah. Baron says that's why his mother overprotected him. It was on account of little Douglas. I don't see why they went and got another lot. You could have buried two people here, and you can bury two people there. You can bury one over there. There's one, five. two, three, four, five left here. But they did. Oh, you mean Baron and Desi got one? And she and Miss Bessie had been together for 40 odd years. I don't get some folks thinking. I don't think some of them doing something. Look, look at all these right here. One man. That is Miss Mamie Wagner's father, Andrew Lewis Harrell. Yeah. Now yeah. that's another clue. Why did Miss Jessie put Mr. Will and Miss Mamie down there in old grand her grandfather's lot when he when her father was here? Why couldn't have buried him on here? Just another case of no thinking. Well, in times of sorrow, somebody kind of has to do the thinking, though. These old trees are a problem, but they're so pretty in the cemetery. There's somebody right under here. There were some shipments in the shop at one time. I've seen the name. Oh, no, it was Stillman. Old man Chipman ran a lumber yard right there on the corner where we got a lumber yard now. Yeah. Tom Chipman. And Douglas's mill was right over there in that hollow, huh? Yeah. Earl Douglas. Kind of going. He's right. Son, two dollars. Bad afternoon, if he did anything, if he'd get up, take a pants off, you know, kill what age was, he'd get after him. But some sort of whittle out one of these things, a little man, and put him in a case, and had some rubber bands on it, and when you pull the lid down, it Peter would pop up. <laughs> and Brandon said the name is Tom, I mean, Colonel Orange. <laughs> God. Oh, the Civil War didn't get all of his. Excuse Adam. There's a Mac Father, Jim and Minnie. Mm. Oh, wait a minute, it's locked. It's locked. There we go. I guess Miss Claire's the last of the Mac Father. Well, she is. And I gotta go see her because I know she's got a million old pictures. Yeah, she may let you look at them, but she's got them kind of light on top of the head. Yeah. And there's an old gentleman I got a picture of, Joel Croon. Yeah. Born in North Carolina, born in Pender. Pender, Pender County. Wouldn't it be nice if people would, uh, would put where everybody was born on the stone? They used to do that. Especially women, they put 
Elizabeth, daughter of so and so and so and so. Yeah, that was. Wife of so and so and so and so. Born such a date and such a place and died at such a place. Yeah. Such a date. But look at that, Mr. Child has done not a thing on that. But Child Edward done. I didn't think the tree doom man done right. He loved Water Valley, he loved the Methodist Church, he loved the railroad. And they took him down to Ella Clive, and he lived down there, and I think he enjoyed it. But when he died, they had his funeral down there and brought him up here to bury him. Mr. Ed Kendi stayed downtown all afternoon waiting for the dumb funeral to get here. And about 5 or 5.30 he went home, and in the next 30 minutes they came in late and brought him up here and buried him and took out back down there. I thought they ought to brought him up here. And they ought to have the Methodist Church funeral? Methodist funeral at the Methodist Church. Oh, that's awful. I didn't know that. Well, you see, they didn't get home much sooner. They could have waited until in the morning and had the funeral at 9 o'clock if they wanted to and been gone for a trail. Well, now, that, that just, those girls ought not have done that. They, I know they had friends down there, but that old man had hundreds of friends up here. Because that's 1945, I believe. Six. Yeah, Mr. Ed fired for him. When he was young. You ever hear about Ben Barrett going to Washington to visit Grace? Decided no. To go over and see Lucius Dunn, commander. Oh, oh yeah, Lucius was. He was over there, rang the doorbell, and the maid came to the door. Said, I would like to see Commander Dunn. He said, well, I'm sorry, but Commander Dunn is not in town. He'll be gone for a day or two. Well, in that case, I can't see him. But I'm Ben Barrett. You just tell him. Ben Barrett came to see him. I used to fire an engine on the Illinois Central Railroad for his daddy. Heard a chorus of voices. My sister said, come on in, Ben. Come on in, Ben. <laughs> and his wife, Nella Clyde, and Eva Maywall up there. Oh. They just didn't want anybody in yeah, the room, they didn't want to be bothered with somebody. Yeah. But somebody from home got the attention because he was a hometown boy from what I read. He was a good looking young fella too and he played in that band they had. I don't know what he played. He and Fred Walden and J and JP Atkinson and another fella playing in the band. Well, what's the told tale about Ben Barrett? I forgot about his his confinement, I reckon. But they had a wreck up here. You know, they placed some cars, and they left some cars out on the, there. was a caboose. And Jim Sam ran through somebody's caboose. You remember about that? No. I heard but about. when they got this, this man, Ben, maybe Ben was running into this. Ben. Well, I'll go back and get the rest of the train now. Bill said, rest of the train? Hell, said, you ain't got no rest of the train. Said, what do you mean, Mr. Bill? Said, Jim Sims better run plumb through your train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember Mr. Sims. He finally went to the g rat switch in and just stayed there. They had fired for him for a hundred years. I tell you, buddy, he said to him, and the two of them, the wrong association with him. You know, he, he was always hungry. He ate all the time. Oh, he? was he? And when he, his daddy was that way. He lived right over there on that, well, George Sutton lived. But Papa said old man Sam could go through town and pick up everything good to eat he could find going home. And tell his wife was a good cook that he just ate good meals all the time. But, uh, What was his daddy's name? Davis. They called him Dave Sam. Dave Sam. Well, there was a Mr. Sims who was a city clerk here at one well, time. Well, that's his brother. That's Eugene. Eugene, yeah, Eugene. But, Said Jim Sims would get out of town that switching and then get in the side and that chance and go over to town and go to the grocery store and see what good he could find to eat. He'd buy anything he could find. He thought they'd have to the next day. One day he got so tired of railroading and he told someone said, I just glad if glad if God Almighty come take me on to him because there wouldn't be no goddamn box car in heaven with it. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the two expressions. But. Hey. <laughs> well, it, many Sims is living over yonder, back over towards Stockwell or somewhere. She lives at uh, uh, 
two of them found it. Not Eupora? No. This is not starting. That's There you go. She's a retired teacher, isn't she? I don't know. I saw her and her sister and her sister's husband came by here a year or two ago. But the sister's husband died. Now, did that other sister, did the sister die? No, thank you. Well, they're living together over there. Okay. You might as go see him. Thank you. Boy, he, he went up there. His name was Henry. Henry Hill. Yeah. He went up there. Now there's where old Russ. Uh, yeah. yeah. He went up there with Mr. Henry Jennings, who was Miss C.B. Fulmer's brother. And while they were gone, I guess other men in the neighborhood went up there and kept carrying home. But Grandma was, and I was, I was asleep. It was early, but I'd gone to sleep. And Grandma, I think, was excited. But she came and waked me up and told me that John Market had shot Henry Hill. It was in the early part of the night. Oh, huh? just a, just after night. Yeah. And I wondered many times why that old lady came with yeah, woke you up. Six year old kid up there. Well, now, did, well, did he die right away? Or? He died about 5 o'clock the next morning. Probably said he took the job on him to go and tell Ms. Hen. I waited along here and I go and tell Mr. Ms. Hill to come on in there. He looked like he was going pretty soon. Well, uh, hold it, hold Alright. Johnson. That's what they Johnson. Yeah. But if, if they found you with anything, they'd just take it away from you. Yeah. Well, it sure is. And they own this whole lot. Launch Jack Candy and Harbor Fly now. Can't hardly read it. Get it shaded if you can. Father, Alexander Kendall, born July the 20th, 1844, and January the 9th, 1913. Now, that's Mr. Eric right there. Yeah. And this whole lot. Got the whole lot belonging. If, if Jack could get all the deeds to... See eight, eight places. Yeah, it's, well, it's a big one, and then the old one for 12, 12 spaces. Well, yeah, Fred, look, you can, they're down this way. Yeah, 20 by 24 is what I'm trying to say. 20 by 24. They ought to either, Jack don't want to sell off, let somebody have this half of it. Yeah, that's. Jack and Laura may be out that good idea. But Jack don't want to talk about it. Well, look at the space right over here. Benny Cole might have bought all that. That was Brandon Law She's lot. And after the children were somewhere else settled somewhere else and they didn't do so late. He bought that. Oh, that? He bought the whole thing. That's cold like tail. They buried that just in pan to pan. Benny on one side and his mama on the other side. That boy. That's right. But that's Fred Law She, and I never knew him. But Bernie, see, Bernie and Ms. Law She had buried that within about two weeks apart right over there. Yeah. And I knew Charlie Law she when I, about 1912, I think I was years elected to Kansas City in terms of education, and he lived upstairs up there to lead and trust him. That's when I knew him. And Charlie Law she. Yeah, I didn't know he was still living, and he was in Grenada, in the rest home, him and his wife both, and, the, and his daughter's married to one of the doctors down there. And he 
he came, he brought him to Brandy's funeral and to Miss Lawson's funeral. And he walked with somebody leading him, but getting him around him just for him. And he's a brother to Bernie Lawson. Ninety-one years old. Good. And nice. I swear to you, he could, you could see he's some older, but he didn't. He was the same form, size, and everything he was then. Now that girl, uh, the girl over here at West Point, sent in a story, and and it got a picture of his father in it. The prominent had a prominent nose. Old man Billy. Yeah, I guess. He's a little so. thin man. Yeah. Well, now, they, the long sheets are buried up here on the back of some bed and the back of this. Then they had a graveyard out there on the place which they have let go to the dogs. Not, you cannot find it. There's not stone, mud, or anything. There. I didn't know there's a graveyard on that place. Well, you can't find it. It's some of the cysts are buried in there. They're kin folks. Look right here on the Claire Eliza Hobson. And I looked in the book this morning and I could not find him anywhere. Well, he's not here. Oh, he's not here. You know, you know he married Miss Willie McClellan. Yeah, I know he did. Then he finally divorced, and he went on over in Alabama and married again, and got him, got back in the graces of the Presbyterian Church and went to preaching again. And his bed over there. Yeah, now that's William Kelly. That's the son. Died of Oh you. yeah, I saw his name in there. Kelly Hobson. Look at yonder, ninety-seven, eighteen years old, and had typhoid. Typhoid fever. Right here in town. Good grief. Now, there's a fellow yonder, J.H. Wilson. Old man John Wilson. I'm going to do something about those stones someday. But the other's got a granite, I mean, a marble base. Yeah. But at least I'm going to get them to take up what's below it and put this down and set it in concrete. Who is that? Well, he's been lost she's mother. Older half brother. I see. That don't explain anything to you, but no. they lived right across the street from Mr. Hobson. All my life, I went by there going to school, and the was a kind old lady. He was all right. He just never had much to say. But I said, had a muscadine vine, and up on the porch, and they built a frame out in front, east. I can see old man Wilson lying back there in that rocking chair with his feet on the bouncer, sleeping on the edge of that porch, that muscadine vine. And where was the house? Well, it's where Happy Thompson lived before he built him a house up there, right north of James, where James lived. Right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. There were, there were two houses that belonged to the Rogers, the rental house. Yeah, there. well, the Presbyterian manse used to be right up there, didn't it? Yeah. Long lived yeah. up there. Who is Maud Chester Hobson? Well, that, she was Maud Hughes, and that's... Uh, uh, Maud Hughes. I'll tell you just a minute what his name is. He's the older boy, Kelly Hobson, and... Oh, yeah. this this is the preacher's daughter-in-law then. Yeah, forty I years old. I think he's still living. You see, they left him a space here, about right here where it is. Uh, yeah, Lord, that Hughes. thing's crooked. Yeah, uh, Kelly and I can't tell you what his name is now. I think I'm a little bit there. Yeah. No, it, well, evidently he's still living. He's not there. He's still near the same age. So. He's born in 94. That's that he's 86 years old. Yeah. 86 years old. Good gracious. Jesse Royal Market. Oh, that's John. That's, that's a fifth or so. Man, yeah. He just never lived a happy life, did he? Miss Jesse was supposed to be religious. But she was the kind... If she'd been in that lived in the days of the king, she'd been one of those take the army and drive the folks who didn't want to be converted into the rivers and <laughs> get them baptized. I'll burn them in, yeah. I'll burn them up, huh? Yeah. See, that's the way she was. Yeah. She was crazy. Was she a royal? Royal. She finally had some crazy. crazy was, was she a sister of the Rob Royal? Or? Yeah. yeah. Rob the young. Oh, was he? Did he have a brother who was a trainman, a baggageman? Yeah. Walter Royal. Walter Royal. Called him happy. Oh, is that Happy? I've yeah. heard of Happy Royal. He and somebody used to shoot at each other. There's a man John Market. I never heard of it at the time. Now, let's see. Two conductors almost got fired one time. for sh No, a conductor and an engineer got, were shooting at each other. Harry Scarborough and uh, Happy Royal, I believe. Anyway. Well, Smith had a shooting spree with somebody down somewhere. I forgot what... They found out they better get in a good humor. 
Well, they get the job now. I saw that son knock the drum for the next thing here. Yes, talking and having a big time, putting on a big front show when you get fire. fired. Joe Market was killed fourth day of July, 1919. I was working over before I was a but he and another boy were up in a balloon going to film the pictures of Dempsey and the Willard fight. Yeah, Dempsey Willard. And the, fight, the balloon, balloon broke loose from its mooring and threw it out over Lake Michigan. Yeah. I think Lake Joe, Erie. Lake Erie. I thought it was at Chicago. No, it was at uh, Toledo, Ohio, wasn't it? Anyhow, I think if Joe had stayed in, the man, the other man couldn't swim, Joe could. If Joe had stayed in until the thing just about ready to hit the water and just held on to it a little bit, They'd have got to him in time, what floats from that thing had. Yeah. But he jumped out and drowned. You know, I have got the North Mississippi Herald about that rare thing. I found the him one of them. She was sitting on the bed and she was being buried by him. She is, but she didn't get a bit of space there. That's his mother right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here they are. Mm-hmm. What about Minnie Maud? I guess she might be buried right here. I no, guess. she won't. She'll be buried right here. Oh, yeah, here's, here's uh, Charlie. Yeah. Charlie was the best friend I ever had. He did that. Oh, re- was he really? Yeah. Well, that's fine. Charlie and Charlie was caught down there. Somebody was in there. He used to do you know, all the rent place. You know, but didn't know him more than that. He said, are you and Charlie owe some kind of kin? I said, no. We just grew up drinking out of the same fruit jar. <laughs> mm. What, who was his daddy? Andy Lowe. Andy Lowe. And there was, what, three children of them? Oh, God, no. Let me see, there's Gene and Charlie and Russell. Russell, and I remember and him. Hugh, that's four boys. Never heard of him. And then there's uh, Irene. Miss and Courtney. And, and uh, what was her name? What was her daughter's name, Lucille. Lucille. Yeah, Lucille was the daughter. Yeah. She was, in that, she was the oldest. She'd come ahead of her, and Miss Courtney and Irene, and then Mabel, and then uh, the way. And there's four boys and four girls. There's eight of them. Good, nice. And uh, Mabel's the only one left, I guess. No. It's important that there's Willis living down there in the north of the way. That's old boy. I never did know him real well. She was a pretty girl. That's what I've heard. Just ostracized her. Made life miserable for her. Miss Muty Cooper. Dr. Cooper's sister. Her name was Sarah Themuthus Cooper. Themuthus? T-H-E-M-U-T-H-U-S. Themuthus? That's a Greek. <laughs> Muty. Miss Muty Cooper. Now, yonder's a fellow yonder that I've got in my book. He got killed in a railroad wreck in 1921. The name is Boyd Pruitt. You ever heard of him? That's right. He's some kid to Taylor Howard. Ruth is buried up here somewhere. i got to get her birthday off of that stone one of these days and put it I want to look down here and see the That's Mr. Fred. Yeah. Miss Fern had an E on it. Yeah. You haven't got any date on it. I was standing right over here when he was when they were closing out the service. No, I didn't remember. I didn't pay any attention to it. There wasn't a whole lot of people here. And uh, no. I never, you know, I never did belong to anything like that. I never have. And just as he, just as they were getting, get him laid out and were waiting for the preacher to pray or something, 41 blew for the crossing down here south of town, the lonesomest sound you ever heard. And I thought, well, that's a tribute. That's to, a fitting. Fitting ending. tribute, yeah. I'll tell you a funny story again. And these are nice old people. That's Ms. Wedley Johnson's father, mother, Lee Hawkins, from Ms. Hawkins. 
Wirtley Johnson. He played baseball, didn't he? Yeah, he was a conductor. Conductor, yeah. His brother was a rich man in the Coca Cola business. Mr. Crawford Johnson, he took for him. in the business of Macomb. But old man Hawkins was a machinist, and he was an engineer, what's called a machinist runner. And oh, I didn't know about them machinist runner. Yeah, he got <laughs> he got kind of old, like, wasn't too old, but he got kind of nutty. He'd see things and imagine he'd see things in the dark. And said one day he went in the toilet up that shop, you know, one thing flushed the whole thing. He sat around looking back on there, there's a frog sitting back on there. He jumped up and grabbed his face and out, snake, snake, and went running out of there, all that, all that kind of stuff. But uh, Charlie Allen told this. Said he came in one afternoon and just while he was washing up, Wendy Johnson came in right behind him, about 20 minutes from behind him. And they washed up together and went home. And the next morning, they both went out the same way early, one following the other. <laughs> he said, well, the Johnson was so tickled he could hardly tell him what he wanted to tell him. He said, you know, the funniest thing happened. He said, we got home, he said, bedtime for the children, the old folks, that they were all in bed, and I didn't want to. Well, I'm thinking about it, isn't that a beautiful tree? Oh, that is a beautiful oak tree. And That's a willow oak. Yeah, he said, uh, so, so, so I didn't go in the front of the house. I tried to go around and have a key to the back door and go in there. Moonlight. So when I got around there, they said, Papa, they called Mr. Hawkins, Papa, he had deer at all down here. He wasn't much of a, let's see, he was 70 years old, and he was 50, he was 48, and 17, what's that, 65, 48, and 17 years, he yeah. was 65 years old, and he died. Well, this is several years before he died, he might have been 60, but he was never all right. And they said, that said, Papa, with a round stick of stove with his wife, well, his wife, Miss Lou, was one of the nicest ladies I ever knew. The man Hawkins owned a child. And he said, Papa, what are you doing sitting out here this time of night that stick of stove wood? Well, he said, Lou's been primping all day. And I asked her why she was primping so much, and she said her sweetheart was coming to see her. And I just thought I'd stand out here where I could knock the son of a bitch in the head when he got here. <laughs> <laughs> she was talking about Charlie, I mean, Wendell Johnson. <laughs> he thought somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I'm glad you told me that because that old man right there is a member of the BLE Lodge way back yonder, and his name is in the book, and I didn't know. I never heard of him before. Lee Hawkins, they call him. Lee Hawkins, that's what his name Leroy. Leroy E. Hawkins. Well, I'll be darned. And he was, yeah, he was an engineer, belonged to the, uh, the Division 99. Yeah. Of the he, first time they he, made up the lodge. He was a machinist. Yeah. And when, after he got there, they couldn't risk him on the road. They put him in the back shop. And he worked there until he yeah. retired at some early age. Well, I've laughed myself more about that old man sitting in the moon like that round stick stove with him. And he moved in Fremont from us. And I asked him what she was trimming for him. He said, Well, her sweetheart was coming to see her. And I just thought I'd sit out there when I could knock the son of a bitch in the head when he got there. <laughs> Talking about Johnson. <laughs> No, he wasn't. He thought it was somebody else. Oh, oh. Hawkins thought it was somebody else. Oh, I see. But, dang, he was helping him out, wasn't he? <laughs> Mr. William Barry, I see that stone shining, you know. Was he the one that ran the, uh... New field. I mean, the structure field. Oh. I see none of them ever put here. Her old lady, she died in the old lady's home, I reckon. But none of them give a rip enough to have a bunch of Oh, oh, over there. Yeah. You're talking about the Scanlon. Old Tom Scanlon said, she used to be my girl. And said, I had a watch. And then said, you can just count the letters. Said, I had her initial by every position on that watch. That's P-E-A-R-L-W-H-I-T-S-O-N. I'd bring you up to Trevor again. Told old Will Barry when he married. Said, said, well, said, you married a good girl. And I'm going to tell you, said, I hugged and kissed a long time before you did. Golly, Pearl Whitson. Uh huh. Well, I'm the dog. That was getting kind of personal. Who who is this winner fella here? Oh, that's the guy that the girl shot. 1912. Let's see now. Where is the Henrys and the? Uh... All right. Oh. That girl shot him. I, the first I heard of Dr. Armstrong was coming back up there, and another kid and I were down there. I don't remember who he was. We were along there right about Atkinson's drugstore. 
What was Atkinson's later? And Dr. Atkinson, Dr. Atkinson, Dr. Armstrong came walking across the bridge diagonally. Two ladies said, Doctor, how is he? He said, Well, he's pretty badly shot. And a little conversation like that went on, and we found out what happened. We took out up there, and they carried him upstairs with a big puddle of blood on the floor, on the south side over in front of the bread cave. Looked like he's about a, oh, as big as a top of a gallon bucket. Hmm. She just up and shot him. Well, now, that was Miss Oak's sister, wasn't it? Yeah, so, but deal. she's all right for shooting him, because he'd been after her for a long time. He was drinking. He was after hot and heavy. Anyway. She was just protect, protecting her maidenhood. Yeah. She, you know, she married a boy working there named Harry Martin. Yeah. I think they had 10 or 11 children. Good gracious. I reckon she's still living. It was a few years back, but I don't know whether she is or not. Now here's the old man, Adam, that's the old man Adam Fulmer. He's one of the early, he's one of those engineers that came from North down here and yeah. taught him how to run an engine. Yeah, he's one of the real old ones. Yeah. Now here's the Adas and the Johnsons. I thought that man's name was Johnson Ada. Well, his, his mother's maiden name evidently was, uh, see there, Rebecca, yeah. somebody, wife of J.W. Ada. But he attended the Johnsons, and Johnson's in there somewhere, so he had the first name of the family, Johnson. Yeah. Johnson Ada. Because at that lodge meeting, way back in the 1880s, they suspended all the activities and let Mr. Johnson Ada come make a speech for the good of the order. And so he came in and he made a speech to the Brotherhood of Locomotive Firemen, and then they let him back out the door and they went on about the business. What he was doing was drumming up a little business for his yeah, watch. being nice to the folks was nice to him. And he presented an ink stand with a pen to the lodge to write the minutes up with. And what is this old one here with all this pretty wall around That's the, that's the Greener lot. Greener's Hill. Oh, is that Miss Greener? Is that the old lady that smoked cigars? <laughs> that's all Greener. You, you talking to me about... Now, Bruce, these are the... Yeah. The, the 30 of them, but one of them is a Spanish war veteran. to 29 of these. Ah, uh, the men who were killed or uh, wounded at Coffeyville and brought up here, you know, the Confederates yeah. pushed them back up to the truck right. over the bottom. But you know, it, it just cooled that question down there. To, were you down there when the, you keep talking about the Battle of Coffeyville? No. Yeah. And uh, I made a picture of them. I told them, I said, well, I can tell you where you are, but I, somebody said, well, where are the any men killed in that thing? I can tell you where they are. They're on the west side of what was the old graveyard in Water Valley. Well, right. I never heard that. They I, picked up a few there that afternoon, and the rest of them died here that night. Yeah, and I brought, I went up here and made a picture of that thing, took that down there to them, and I hadn't heard them move back to Battle of Coffee Hill. <laughs> well, it you that told me about uh, a man ha having to bring a Yankee soldier up here and bury him? That's the, that's the law, you see that? Oh, yeah. How about bringing a Yankee soldier up here? Her father had to come up here and help bury a Yankee soldier that got killed when they first came into town the day before that battle of Coffee. Oh, they buried that fellow, I thought, on the side of the road there. Well, they may have. But he got killed as the first scouts came into Water Valley. And was it Miss, it? Miss uh, India? Miss Patton. Patton, Patton. Now, he wasn't the first. He was on the tail end of the Confederate force. Oh. They were retreating south. I see. And he was one of the one of the group fighting the rear guard action. I see. And that Yankee was, was on his horse and he rode ahead of the, the gate. Now you can stop it. I stop, stop right here. in the shade, yeah. Uh, and he rode ahead and they thought he was drunk. He was way ahead of all the others. And rode up and he came in range and this little old man dropped down on his knee, boy, and shot him and fell off that horse. He lived to be an old man, South Mississippi. And when after I was working at the bank a number of years, Miss Ann Key was a postmaster. She got a letter addressed to the postmaster and all of that, and he recited that thing just like I heard before. Said, there's just one thing I want to know. Did I kill that Yankee? And she let me have the letter, and I took it up the street there next to the Episcopal Church where Miss Patton lived and let Miss Molly Patton read the letter. He said, it occurred right up there in that flat in front of that church. He said, my... Daddy and a man named Painter was standing there looking at the dead Yankee. 
and the army, the Yankee army came on down the road and they had to take to the woods to get away from them. Well, I'm done. Uh, now, that painter family was a, was here for a long time, and and I guess one of their sons was a lieutenant painter. Yeah, that's right. William, William S. Painter was a lieutenant in Company F, and he's the guy who wrote down that roster in 1909 and mailed it back into the paper. Where did he live then? He lived at Arlington, Tennessee. And who did you tell me that she was fond of first? Tobe Boyce. Tobe Boyce. I bet she was a pretty girl. Tobe Boyce must have been around her. You know, he, he was, must have been. He was, he was a young man that just had a teenage boy. We didn't have to move that thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You know me trusted, don't you? Oh, yeah. Miss you trusted? I'm Bruce Carter. Oh, Bruce? Well, glad to see you. Uh, I, uh, I wanted to see you and talk to you about it. I may want to sell some stock. Okay. Will the next? Will the son of. Here's one I can't understand. You know, this was opened up up here by the other people. It was opened up after the old cemetery street down here and made the cutout to understand the fragrance. Look at that. I can't even know what that is. Nine feet, was three. That's a young man, 23 years old. William J., son of W. T. and M. N. Johnson. Born three years before the Civil War. He was 22 years, six months, 24 days. But they got this. He couldn't have been a Confederate soldier. That's wrong. No. So there must be somebody buried here who was. But it shouldn't be in front of that. No. Miss Lee, now come on, we'll look up on man Peter Kennedy. Well, now, is this the Johnsons that used to live out here on the Herman White place? Yeah, the only John, this is John C. Oh. This is him exposing John Johnson. John C., yeah. All right. Oh, that wasn't that you trust his wife? Yeah. Widow? Just hung in with her, you hung in. Well, she's mad at somebody, isn't she? Yes, she's mad at somebody, Henry? And now look at that. Who huge lot, two people. All the others on here. Oh, are they? Old man UK Johnson and UK Martin was an old lawyer here. Oh, Hugh Martin, yeah. And uh, he had a brother on him, a wife on him, whoever else on here, I don't know. Oh but, yeah, he was a he was one of the oldest lawyers here. Yeah, well, I think that's UK right there. Yeah, I got him in the lawyer book. In fact, in that eighteen sixty nine paper that Don let me borrow. He's one of the lawyers that are advertising to collect. <laughs> We're practicing all courts of Lafayette, Calhoun, Yalabusha, Grenada, and Tallahatchie County, and we'll collect the count. This is the lot. And there's a... Boy, John Splain. Splain. Well, that's old not... man Splain, yeah. No, that's not old. Oh, died in 89. That's the daddy of Patty Splane, then. No, no. It's, it's, they called him Johnny. This is Johnny Splane. He didn't know her name in 1914. But that's old Patty and his wife. Jack Kendra bought that monument. I see. Well, that was good of him. They were friends, but not brothers. That's Peter. Well, Jack must have put that. How did he know he was buried right there? My boy told me. Oh. He had a... Brick and clothing. Father of Eric, John, grandfather of Elizabeth Kennedy, Irwin, and Edgar. Well, there's no, there's no other. There were only three children with this old man, Peter Well, and Jack didn't know 
Yeah. Let's go. Well, maybe this young Jack's on that in that grave like that. No, I don't see but two. Well, a lot of times it doesn't mean that not others there. I see that six bed in that lot. Inscriptions on the stone, but the graves don't show. I see. He got killed in 96. A car rolled out of the yard at Jackson and hit him. A car rolled a pipe. Hit him and scalded him to death. But he is 60 years old. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm betting that there's a that there's a young Jack Kennedy bed right here or somewhere. About 1909. Like there's a grave there. He, he must have been real young. That's why I was hoping there's a stone there. Now, you know, some folks I never heard of witness. Oh, he was a well-to-do man, yeah. Well off, huh? Yeah, you know, that, that, that talked to her, her book of children, had a big furniture store there, didn't he? Oh. And uh, he married a mother, Charlie Murray's sister. You know, oh, I see. Julius Benjamin Whitney. Yeah. Came up in Connecticut or somewhere. Oh, I see. And one married a Tolliver, Artemis S. Whitney. Yeah. Born in 1801. Yeah.